Hello there and welcome back to the SWTVC podcast, the audio home of the SWTVC crew and the ongoing push for the continued existence, expansion, and success of the heritage scale of Star Wars collecting. I'm your host, Evan Freeze, or as you may know me on Instagram, at Mile High Ground, and I am joined by the incredible, the talented, the vocal soft serve that is John Linquist, aka at The Vintage Concepts. Uh, today, we've got a bunch of stuff to chat with you or chat at you about, depending on how you view podcasts, if it's just people talking to each other and ignoring you, uh, or it's just a conversation you're a part of, but are not participating in actively. Who knows? Podcasts are magic. I would like to put in a little sound there that's like a Harry Potter like wand Do-do-do-do. sound or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Something, something fun like that. Um, <laughs> before we jump into anything, though, I do want to share an exciting milestone that just happened on Instagram uh, today. Well, technically yesterday, but we kind of waited to, uh, you know, say anything about it until today so as not to jinx it. Uh, At SWTVC on Instagram has hit 10,000 followers. Yes, that's right. There's a K after the number on our followers. Wow. So, yeah, dude, that's uh, just a couple weeks over two years for us and... That's impressive. I I think. I don't know. I'll toot our horns if I have to. What do you think, John? Oh, that's a pretty good number. It's more than I have on my personal accounts. So yeah, it's pretty good. Same. Same. Yeah, it's like five times what I have on my personal. So. Yeah. But a lot of work from uh well from us and also from our other team members, of course. Uh putting yes. in the uh Tyler and Lewis putting in the work to get the posts up. Most of the time you and I do more of the uh of lists and whatnot and breaking down how far behind we are other lines and whatnot you know but uh, we all we all contribute in our own ways so uh yeah yeah i just want to say thank you to you john and thank you to tyler lewis and carlo for uh you know not only letting me be part of this team but doing this all together it's been it's been a blast and it's always fun talking to you guys pretty much every day more than i talk to my own family uh (laughs) sorry family but then again i know none of them listen to this so Yes. Uh, what can you do? But yeah, I'm excited. Um, I'm sure we'll probably be figuring out some details for an appreciation giveaway uh, fairly soon. So listeners, followers, friends, please stay tuned to at SWTVC on Instagram uh, to keep track on any updates or developments on that front. And thank you all, the listeners and the community and our colleagues in the community as well for all of the support and just, you know, we couldn't, we couldn't have done any of this without any of you. So I really appreciate the entirety that is SWTVC from us to every single follower, even the bots, probably the bots, especially the bots. I don't know. They're keeping us running. (laughs) We could say thank you 10,000 times, but I'll just, you know, you can just edit Thank yeah. you. And just copy that 10,000 times. But yeah, we'll just we'll just do a, a bunch blanket. of cold reads of thank you and yeah. see what happens. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. A blanket <laughs> thank you to everyone who follows us, helps us, works with us. It's it's been a it's been a ride. It's been a it's continues been a dream to be a ride. True. Yeah, we're right. Done. It's we're not done yet. It's still going. Let's see we if we can hit 20k. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. In another 10 years, we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, hey, John. How you doing, bud? I am good. How are you? You know, I'm doing all right. I'm tired. Long week of work. Uh, not used yes, to saying yes. that. So it's good. It's good. <laughs> just watched Andor for the second time, but we will get into that. I just a little watched, later in the episode. Yeah, I just watched it. I watched the first two episodes for the second time. I watched the third for the first time. So uh, excited to talk about that in a little bit. Yes. Yeah, so if you don't want spoilers, you can just listen to the first half of the episode. Yeah. And uh, yeah. we'll, you know, save it for there. You know, I saw some graphic on Instagram the other day. I don't know. It didn't have any dates on it, but yeah. uh, they, there's a thing called PulseCon. Yes. And I believe that's next weekend or at the time of this episode's released, probably today. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, yeah, depending on how fast I edit. Uh, well, hey, since PulseCon is coming up and it's imminent or it's happening right now as you hear this or it's already happened if you're late to the party on the podcast uh we're going to take a quick look back at the previous two hasbro pulse cons uh thanks to john who tirelessly put in some efforts here to kind of keep track of what 2020 looked like uh, and what 2021 looked like and maybe that can kind of help inform and temper or whatever our expectations going into this pulse con so that 
were either pleasantly surprised or, you know, not terribly shocked uh, if we end up being pretty butthurt about stuff. So, yes, it's, it's uh, good to have hope, but it, let's not get too uh, worried or freaked out if it's not, you know, all our wildest dreams coming true. Yeah. Just wanted to take a look back at the other post cons before we head into this one. Yeah. As we as we head into this one. So 2020 was the first one, right? Uh, yes. So PulseCon, not to be confused with the one and only HasCon. I see a lot of people calling it HasCon, but that was the in-person event held in Rhode Island in 2017. Uh, the first, last, and only HasCon. Um, so PulseCon, it seems that it was created in, around 2020 to uh, kind of take the place of the in-person events that we were missing out on that year. There was no uh, San Diego Comic-Con. There was no celebration. There was no anything in person uh you all remember why but uh yeah in some regards it was a way to offer exclusives that i think everyone assumes had originally been planned for san diego comic con uh, which included for tvc the 501st legion arc trooper three pack which we have now seen them all repacked in the main line including uh jesse most recently and then two exclusives for black series the heroes of indoor set uh and the hoth wampa in tvc style packaging you know the uh well one the wampa insult to injury on that one being in tvc packaging looks so nice uh wrong scale um the heroes of endor set uh on the notes i typed lol next to it because that honestly has been still like available to purchase on hasbro pulse up until quite recently uh i think it's out of stock now finally but it was it was up for a while the uh, Poplu that was exclusive to that set is coming again on the uh, 40th anniversary card backs next year. Oh, good. Or, so I shouldn't uh, yeah, have gotten another that chance. set. Yes. Got it, got it, got it. <laughs> okay. I feel I felt dumb for buying it uh, for many reasons. One, Black Series. Two, it was figures that were already coming to the main line, and I already had yeah. a speeder bike for Black Series, and I was positive Poplu was going to show up eventually, and lo and behold. Here he comes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah whatever but so uh those are the exclusives now let's look at the reveals um not the most exciting reveals for vintage collection in 2020 or throughout all of 2020 pretty much um it was the peasant anakin repack wave the infamous one that uh, kicked off 2021 with peasant anakin episode one queen of Madala, and the battle droid and the tie pilot no figures that went together in any capacity at any point yes <laughs> so <laughs> Uh, they, another repack, but in the main line, it was the Captain Rex repack mm -hmm. from that, the Black Series. Yeah, and and that rubbed folks the wrong way since it was straight repack, right? Y yes, and not a very good figure to begin with, which led to the redo Rex campaign, which they did uh, sort of acknowledge when they uh, released the Bad Batch four pack eventually with the better Rex, which is not really a Clone Wars Rex, but it's a better Rex. Um, and still uh, never got the uh, phase one Rex that they teased a decade ago. And maybe though, maybe we'll get a brand all totally new one on the uh, upcoming phase two clone trooper body. We will have to wait and see. But anyway, we didn't get that in 2020. But we did get uh, the in mention of the incinerator trooper as a Walmart exclusive, uh, which was, as you mentioned later, a Walmart exclusive again in carbonized and again uh, this year. As a deluxe set, so Walmart loves their Incinerator Troopers. Even though it's red, you think that'd be a Target thing, but whatever. The Incinerator Trooper and uh, the Din Djarin and Grogu pack that both was was it those two that both had no that both had the same VC number? Uh, yes, both Walmart exclusive. Uh, they were both yeah, supposed yeah to at the same time come out. Yeah, they're both supposed to come out end of 2020, and then they just disappeared for a while for U.S. collectors. Uh, I remember a buddy of mine sourced the Incinerator from uh, Canada and got it to me, so I actually had it. Uh, end of 2020, but we didn't get our Mando Deluxe Packs for uh, yeah. quite some time. So on the figure front for the reveals of that one, it was nothing exciting. But, of course, that is when they launched the Razor Crest HasLab. And Hasbro had teased that they would be doing a vintage collection HasLab, a second vintage collection HasLab after the barge. Uh, they teased that ahead of time during a Fan First Monday event on June 22nd. Yeah, they teased it on uh, June 22nd, and the actual PulseCon was September 25th and 26th, 2020. Anyway, back to the notes. Uh, <laughs> and of course, yes, it ended up funding in a, like 26 hours, a little bit over a day, so it was a smashing success. Um, and uh, yeah, t again, took a while to get that actually shipped to us, but... We just got the, the beginning, beginning of this year, 
So Mm -hmm. it took quite Uh, a while. Worth the wait, in my opinion. I love that thing. Yep. So (laughs) there were only the guy who hasn't opened one. (laughs) I haven't opened it yet, so I I need some time to do that. But I was trying to count the uh, figures. So there was really what six figures revealed? Seven, if you want to count Mando. uh, That was in the Razor Crest. We didn't know about the other stuff in the Razor Crest yet, as they were tier unlocks. So not a lot. Um, And looking to the other scale on that day for the Black Series product, they got new basic clone trooper, new dark ray, uh, incinerator trooper, which was, you know, balance the scales with the TVC reveal. Interesting that they did both scales of that character on the same day. Uh, They got three new deluxe figures that day, Jar Jar, Boba Fett, and the armorer, which was a convention exclusive uh, later that fall for some fake convention that didn't happen. Yeah. Um, they also got a repack wave, which was Cody, Thrawn, and Hoth versions of Luke and Han. Uh, and then the five different holiday troopers, which were exclusives at various retail partners. So that was, yeah, I didn't, I, I was going to count them and then it got messy with the next year. So I didn't fully count them, but that's, that's a lot of figures. Yeah. You can count them. I hope you're keeping track. Rewind your podcast 30 seconds and listen to that again. And it also includes one, two, three, four, five, five new sculpts, which is over half the amount of new sculpts the TVC got in 2020. Yeah. 2020 was a rough one for many reasons. So. Yes. Uh, they also got a role play item kind of under the black, well, under the black series banner, but you know, kind of not really, yeah. which was Ahsoka Tano's lightsaber. And as the resident lightsaber expert, you want to take it away on that one? Uh, yeah. Disney parks offered uh, Ahsoka's lightsabers as well. Um, I think that was last year. So it wasn't quite around the same time, but I think it was teased uh, about the same time that the Hasbro one showed up. Um, anyway, I do have the Disney set. I have both. Uh, the Disney set comes with uh, Ahsoka Shoto, her little short lightsaber. Uh, they don't mm-hmm. come with the blades, but they do have the short blades and the long blades available to get at the Disney parks, so you can have it accurate. Uh, they do the color change as well. Um, but this is also um, the only elite lightsaber so far that has been straight up discontinued. Uh, whereas you'll notice that like Revan's lightsaber is coming back. Uh, they're doing another run of that or a reissue of that. Um, Ahsoka's won't be, or if it does, it'll be kind of fixed up because I know there was a lot of quality control issues with it, uh, including major issues with the edges on the hilt being super sharp and cutting up people's hands. Uh, wow. Having it, having it myself, I didn't really buy into that when I was reading. I was like, yeah, people are just dumb. They don't know how to swing around a lightsaber. (laughs) No, man, that thing is pretty sharp. So uh, I get it's a great display piece, though. I hadn't heard about that. Was it like on the the grip of where you hold it or was it like any and all cuts? Yeah, like the the divots, because, you know, there's the black lines that go down the sides, the deeper cuts and the ignition box uh, are all just sharp corners, man. It's all just (laughs) just abrupt metal corners. So, wow. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. Interesting. Regardless, it, it's really nice. It's a really nice lightsaber. Um, I like it a lot as a display piece. I mean, the Force Effects light, uh, Elite lightsabers are my favorite line of, uh, you know, licensed lightsabers yeah. uh, out there. Uh, I do love the legacy lightsabers from Disney Parks, um, but they're hard to track down. They can be really pricey with the uh, smuggler fees from getting people to take them for you uh, from the parks. Uh, but I think the Disney Parks one did do this one better than uh, Hasbro did in terms of including the Shoto for a similar price is the kicker. Uh, I would have, so. yeah, I, I would have gotten the Hasbro one, but I, I did want the the set of two. Yeah. So I didn't get it, but you know, the Hasbro one is more accurate because lightsabers should be cutting people. So yeah, just yeah. maybe not in the way they intended, I guess. No. <laughs> yeah, moving on to PulseCon 2021, the second annual, we were still not back to in-person events yet. Uh, that was on October 22nd and 23rd, so a little bit under a year ago. Uh, Star Wars was day one on both uh, 2020 and 2021 events during those events. Um, and again, they offered exclusives that were presumably originally planned for Comic-Con, including the TVC Emperor's Throne Room, which was, of course, the debut of that figure with a unique head sculpt and uh, throne and display and the cardboard box that opens up. We know it's not a full throne room playset. We are aware of this. We have gone over that many times. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, Black Series got two items again, including the Lucasfilm 50th Anniversary Cantina Showdown, recreation of the Power of the Force 2 three-pack with uh, Obi-Wan, Dr. Evazan, and Panda Baba. And yes, as you say, the uh, really bummed me out at the time and still bums me out, but uh, it's the piece of the cantina that the uh, collectors of the 3.75-inch line 
I've never gotten and always wanted the distillery in the middle of the bar. Yeah. Yep. Plus the third opportunity. Yeah. That's the uh third it was the third opportunity, I think. Cause there was the initial release in the Revan Wave and the A New Hope 40th. It was the third opportunity for Black well, Series fans and to have been Con in a Comic Con pack with his uh table and the Leo hologram. Cool. Fourth opportunity for Black Series yeah. fans to get. I knew I was forgetting some repack uh, to get yeah. Ben Kenobi. Uh, but the first time they got him with Photo Reel, congrats, folks. Hey, Hasbro, we still need one in the vintage collection. Please. Yes. And I think Thank they also, you. around the same time, that was when they got him in the uh, Kinner colors with yeah. like different Photo Reel. So there's been a lot of, a lot of Ben Kenobis in the uh, We All Want Our Bins, as we all know, in yep. PVC. Hey, we're getting a retro one this year, though. For a hundred dollars in a hundred dollar set. <laughs> yeah. So the other Black Series exclusive was Trapper Wolf, who we still do not have in a vintage collection. That'd be an easy one. It would be very easy. But the vintage reveals uh, in 2021 for PulseCon were the Navarro Cantina playset with the Death Trooper repack, um, which was nice, which came out not that long after the reveal. It was quick. Um, I, th- I think that thing was showing up in January or February of mm-hmm. this year. And then another repack wave. So apparently PulseCon is big on the repack waves. This was the uh, prequel one with Anakin, Obi-Wan, Mace, and Ahsoka, which, you know, got us some of the accidental celebration Attack of the Clones 20th anniversary figures, and technically an early Obi-Wan Kenobi series figure since Obi-Wan appeared in his Attack of the Clones garb during the flashback. I'm giving them a lot of credit on that one. But, you yes, know, you not are. A, wasn't, a, wasn't a bad, uh, excuse the uh, expression, wasn't a bad batch of repacks, <laughs> but still repacks. No, and the Ahsoka was smart. I know she was one of mm-hmm. the five of the um, Vote from the Vault, and I think all but one of those so far have been either released or are coming. Uh, well, Starkiller was one, right? Yeah, that we still don't have uh, the Weakway or the uh, Imperial Assault Tank. Okay, so, two. so three of the five. Three of the five have made their way. Yeah, still not bad. No. Uh and then another set of four repacks, but with new heads, the Rebel Fleet Trooper uh, Troop Builder Pack. Um, and then the Maldo Crease Mando Deluxe set, which was also, at the same time, debuted in the Black Series. So again, there was a character that was debu- or a style, a representation that was debuted in both lines at the same time. And uh, that Target exclusive Black Series version has still not shipped, but is one of the... Uh, exclusives that is finally showing up and has a release date of october 2nd as well so when was so Pulsecon in 2021 october uh, 22nd was when they okay. revealed it I, I was gonna say if it was in so september then yes it was a year for that for that uh, st- there is a uh, just while we're on the black series topic of that one of the other target items is the uh, droids boba fett in six inch which was put up alongside the tvc ones in september last year i want to say which we it we finally got all the uh, TVC ones over the last couple months, but uh, yeah, Black Series Boba is still nowhere to be found. But the other reveals for Black Series that day were new deluxe Cobb Vanth, uh, single boxed versions of Migs Mayfeld Morak and Boba Fett from Tython, three Galaxy's Edge multi packs representing the First Order Droid Depot and the Creature Stall. Uh, yeah, so those were the figures, and then for role play they got uh, Leia Organa's lightsaber, and uh, yeah, again, lightsaber expert. Yep, Disney also did this one just about the same time. Of course, Disney's lightsabers they do announce them with a really short lead time. You're not, you know, and of course you can't get them outside of the parks really. Uh, occasionally they'll have bundles on Shop Disney. There's a Vader one up, but that's one of the original ones mm. that they launched in 2020 anyway. Um, yeah, they did uh, the Disney one, which was great. I had that one. I I kind of saw. I kind of cycled through having lightsabers, but I love the uh, the Hasbro ones. Uh, I will say Hasbro's Leia, Leia lightsaber is just a little better than the Disney one. They're both very similar, obviously, uh, but I love Leia's lightsaber. It's nice to see any kind of positive, well done product from a sequel property. But uh, yeah, yes. And now we know why it kind of looks like Ben's lightsaber, I guess, after the Obi Wan mm-hmm, series. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just touch on the Meldo Crease Mando for TVC. Uh, they did make one critical update to Mando, so it wasn't just a straight repack. Um, you know, we get the spiders, but they added rocker ankles to the excellent Din Djarin Mandalorian sculpt. Mm-hmm. Um, so moving forward, you know, Mando can be as absolutely modern and great as he can be. 
Um, Perhaps we will see that uh, those ankles very shortly again. Oh, ooh. <laughs> leading us to, I'll just say real quick. So again, Black Series got a little bit more. They got more multi packs, you know, um, and a lot of stuff that was relevant to what was around for Star Wars. The media that time. Yeah. of the time. Yes. <laughs> yeah. But uh, see, it was a little better for TVC that year, but still nothing wildly spectacular. The Navarro Cantina was nice. Everything was nice, you know. Yeah, nothing, nothing earth shattering, but it was all nice. Yeah, so this year, now, coming up on PulseCon, September 30th and October 1st, uh, Star Wars will be on day two this time. It will be the final panel of the entire PulseCon. Now, what is... Oh, wait, wait, wait. I totally forgot. Why do I not have it in the notes here? I have it in my other notes. I don't know what happened when I emailed you this stuff. The other big thing uh, for Black Series was, of course, who could forget it? They're trying to make us forget it. I almost forgot it. The Rancor has lab. I know why you forgot it, John, because we straight up did a two hour episode about just you and me yes. talking about the rank or the day or the night that it failed. And yes, I think we both agreed then and there that we were never going to talk about it at length never again. About it again. <laughs> so but I'm breaking I'm breaking my promise. That's OK, man. That thing is. Whew. So, yeah. So PulseCon was in late October, but they uh, accidentally leaked that it was going to be a rank or on July 15th, shortly after they had announced that there would be a Black Series HasLab. So StarWars.com had to officially announce it on July 16th. Yeah, they tried to backpedal. Nobody was fooled. Yes, three months before the uh, PulseCon. We all know what happened with that. Listen to the other episode if you wanted. But so yeah, so both PulseCons launched a HasLab, one a lot more successful than the other. Mm -hmm. And we will discuss. there was a HasLab just launched, like what, last week? Uh, yeah. The uh, not Star Wars, of course, but... The Marvel Engine of Vengeance, which as of last night had uh, just a few hours to get the early bird figure and they did not do it. I'm thinking it'll still back, but all these people who, I don't know if people still don't understand HasLab. They don't understand that you don't get charged until the item is backed. So why not just back Until it? the end of the backing campaign. Right, 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 right. right. Yeah, yeah. Um, so why not just click order and then sort out your money? That's 25 that's twenty five dollars of value that they just sacrificed, that they just threw away. Yeah, people are complaining life. that it doesn't have enough value. Well, here, here's another way to add value to it: twenty five dollar figure right there for no additional charge. But anyway, that's another another scale, another line. Yeah, it's just frustrating to see that people, after how many years now, several years, still don't quite understand. Yeah, the bar works four years ago. I guess. Um, but hey, rest assured, vintage collection fans, we will hold your hands and talk through everything and guide us all through. If we get another Hasbro TVC, uh, has lab, we will, yes. we will hopefully see if we can set the record straight and we can all work together to make sure we're all on the same page and make it as successful as possible. Yes. But I wouldn't expect it this weekend because no, <laughs> as we said, both the razor crest and the rancor were teased ahead of time. So was the engine of vengeance. I think, I don't know, but I think a lot of the other Haslabs were as well. Am I right about that? I think they've all been teased. Like the Hiss Tank was also teased. I don't know if Reva's uh, lightsaber was teased ahead of time. No, it wasn't. But that let's just not talk about that yeah. one. That's a cookie monster <laughs> thing that we just pretend didn't happen. So, so and I, I say that as someone who likes Reva and loves lightsabers. Yes. So, so it could happen. I'm not getting my hopes up. Uh, yeah, even though the other two were... Two of the most recent ones were debuted at PulseCon. I'm not expecting it this time, but who knows? Anything's possible. Yeah. And uh, you said so it was day two. And mm -hmm. I just got to ask you something, John. Yes. Why the weird wording for the uh, the panel, huh? Is, I don't think is it's the brand that team weird. safe? Are they all right? Uh, yes. Yeah, so what you're talking about, which literally nobody else has brought up, <laughs> is on the Hasbro Pulse website. It Pepe says... Pepe Sylvia. <laughs> <laughs> every other line says... Br such and such brand panel, G.I. Joe brand panel, Marvel brand panel, Power Rangers brand panel. The Star Wars one says something about... Uh, it says Hasbro Star Wars offerings. Yes. But then you click in it and it says the Hasbro Star Wars team will be talking and it'll be fine. All your pals will be there. Uh, yeah, I'm sure, it's, I'm sure that you're right and I'm just crazy. But on the off chance mm -hmm. that there's just something wrong, <laughs> you heard it here first. They don't want but to, I'd, I, I am just crazy. I'm just absolutely bad <laughs> insane, so that's fine. So, yes. So, we don't know if the brand team will be there. I assume they'll be there. But what will be there are the exclusives that were revealed uh, at just ahead of San Diego Comic-Con. They were on display at San Diego Comic-Con. For TVC, we have the rescue set, 
which is the Dark Trooper, the Mandalorian, Grogu, and Gideon, all with upgrades or alternate accessories uh, that we discussed when it was revealed. But it is a, an upgrade to the Mando that was uh, similar to the Maldo Kreese set with those beautiful, sweet ankles that we're all obsessed with. Um, and he has the Beskar Spear, and he has a, uh, a cloth cape, which they did not give to the Beskar Spear uh, Mandalorian that they just rebuilt for Black Series for whatever reason. For some, They like to keep... Uh, most soft goods to vintage collection. I don't know why that is. I'm not complaining. I'm not complaining either. But um, <laughs> yeah, so it's got some fire effects, some little baby handcuffs, some more soft goods. So great set. That should be available, I assume, uh, shortly after the brand panel. Um, for Black Series, there is the Cassian Andor and B2 Emo set. B2 Emo, I guess we haven't heard. B, as they call them in the show. B. Uh, which was revealed earlier. And then the other... As this follows the pattern of one vintage collection pack and two Black Series items, uh, the Black Series Boba Fett in all black arena disguise was announced with those items, but was sold online during Comic-Con ahead of time. So yes, following the pattern in some respects, but things are a little bit shaken up because this is the first PulseCon since Hasbro uh, has resumed their in-person appearances at conventions after a celebration in San Diego Comic-Con. So... Well, does that mean that's going to decrease the amount of stuff they're going to reveal here? Um, I don't know, because they revealed a fair amount at both of those conventions. They had more um, fan-first live streams, I think, during... I haven't run the numbers, but I think there was more. There were more in uh, 2020 and 2021 than there have been this year. There haven't been that many this year. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. Because that was kind of a replacement for conventions, does that mean there's going to be less now that we actually have conventions? I have no idea what to expect, but I'm just tempering those expectations. Yeah. Well, hey, with all of that in mind, the previous year's offerings, um, what should we maybe expect, you know, if those previous years were any indication? Um, it's kind of seeming like what you outlined, a TVC repack wave. Yeah. Um, and the other stuff that you typed here, John, if you want to go over that. Sure. So as far as the repack wave, we haven't had one since that uh, Ahsoka, Anakin, Obi-Wan, Mace wave. Um, of course, rumors abound, as they always do, but we have no idea. We haven't, you know, had anything to expect on that front. Um, I don't know if they're doing fewer repacks. I don't know. I think the repacks were supposed to be at mass retail. Were they ever actually a target? I don't think they were, other than like maybe return somewhere that you saw. I saw the the first wave in 2020. Uh, well, but I mean the oh, more since recent. The, now yeah, since yeah, um, the peasant since An- the peasant Anakin wave did make it all to mass retail. Uh, yeah, but that was and that I'm, was I'm talking about so oh, just the, this with, wave in with, particular with the Ahsoka wave. They were saying now it's finally going to be on its own. Yeah. skew. It's finally going to be in its own peg at stores if they choose to carry it because previously it was always supposed to be a separate I saw thing. A, I saw it at GameStop. Right, it's not right. A GameStop. That's it. So I don't think it actually did ever make it to Target. So I don't. Maybe that means they just decided not to do anymore. Maybe there'll be another wave now. We don't know. Let's find out. Um, so the previous years also had a character revealed for both scales. So maybe this time we might see Cassian. Uh, though I doubt they're going to put up the Black Series single box Cassian that is a hundred percent obviously coming, as they always do based on these convention sets. Uh, will they put up that one and? Uh, the deluxe one at the same time. I doubt it, but you know it might count if they finally put up the vintage collection one that we know is coming. We'll get to that in a minute. Other than that, I don't know. Probably another TBS roleplay item. Probably more Black Series than vintage collection, unfortunately. Yeah. But there have been a lot of uh, Black Series reveals lately. There were two for Target, two for Walmart, two for GameStop, two for... Uh, uh, sorry, yeah. Two for Target, two for Walmart, two for GameStop, one convention. Yeah, and we're getting the Halloween uh, ones soon. Exclusive, and then one, uh, and then the Ahsoka and Mando pack that they released. Yes, yes, Amazon. They, I keep... they revealed on the day Andor came out. They're like, hey, you excited for Andor? Here's something from two years ago instead. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Here's some repacks <laughs> with some new stuff. Okay. Yep. Yeah, okay, whatever. Um. So, I don't know. I'm hoping we'll see some stuff that's in the pipeline. Yep. Hope we'll see some stuff that's a surprise to us. Yeah. What all What all is in the pipeline right now? Funny you should ask. Uh, the Artillery Stormtrooper. Okay. Star Killer, a photo reel repack. Hunter from the Bad Batch. Uh, deluxe world building set of Paz Vizsla. And three items from Return of the Jedi 40th. Those would be Han Solo Indoor, Admiral Piet, and all new speeder bike with a partially retooled scout trooper. So when will we hear more about Return of the Jedi 40th? Maybe this weekend? I don't know. 
Yeah. Um, and then, of course, there are the ones that were not revealed officially, but were shown at Comic-Con accidentally, which, of course, were Cassian Andor and Vel Sartha from the Aldani mission, which... Uh, I have not heard anything about that, but it would be nice to start hearing about that. We don't know. Speaking of not knowing, uh, it's kind of like Hasbro doesn't know half the time either. Um, talking about Andor, there's been nothing, man, other than those those two accidental reveals at Comic-Con. Mm-hmm. And a, you know, this isn't from Hasbro, but the, the B2 EMO uh, surprise dropped by Disney Parks uh, for the Droid Factory, uh, which yes. rocks, by the way. I did recently get with that finally and uh, open it and he's awesome. He's a great little figure. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. He talks. Um, I expected him to beep. So that's rad. Yeah. But yeah, Hasbro's lack of anything for TVC folks for Andor, not even whispers. <laughs> so it's, mm-hmm. it's hard to be excited. I was struggling. It was in the back of my mind while watching the episodes. That's for sure. Um, just as a collector being, you know, collecting is how I part of how I experience Star Wars. So that's always a tough one. Um, you know, just I, I did put down a little timeline of Andor to kind of see where Hasbro is at with it as a media property. Uh, so the show was announced November 12th, 2018. It was filmed in, you know, from November 2020 to September 2021. So wrapped up about a year ago. Uh, the first trailer was at Celebration, uh, May 26th, 2022. The premiere date was originally August 31st, 2022, but it just was this past week, September 21st, 2022. Uh, It was delayed three weeks. Um, So for Hasbro, they've revealed officially six six inch figures for the Black Series. Uh, Yeah, again, nothing official other than those leaks or not leaks, those accidental reveals at Comic-Con. So nothing official uh, or even rumored for vintage collection besides that. so yeah, uh, John, you've got some thoughts here, which I yeah. agree with. Uh, I'm just way less tactful about it than you are. So, well, I I don't think it's a lack of communication between Lucasfilm and Hasbro. Uh, you know, they all they always talk about the surprise of seeing Grogu for the first time in the Mandalorian or Luke for the first time in The Force Awakens. You know, as we all did in the theater or on Disney Plus when they first came out. Um, and it also seems like there were a lot of surprises held back for Book of Boba Fett that I assume Favreau and the team did not want to leak, but they clearly had assets in a timely fashion for Andor uh, to create the handful of figures that they are bringing to Vintage Collection in the next wave, we assume, and uh, to Black Series, um, some of which just went up at Target, more of which are going up at Walmart soon, and the others, Cassian and B2, will be going up at PulseCon. So, They had the ability to make figures. They did make figures, just not that many of them. We don't know what's going on. Uh, There's been no announcement about uh, Andor-related product reveals like they did for Mando Mondays, Bring Home the Bounty for Book of Boba, or Obi-Wan Wednesdays. So we really have no idea when we'll be seeing more from this series. Um, Will we have to wait for Vel Sartha to appear in the series before getting an official reveal on the figure? She wasn't in the first three episodes. She's only been in... Uh, a couple of posters and trailers very briefly compared to a lot of other characters. Well, so it's a little frustrating. And yeah. And you know, you said the first three episodes, we, we all watched three episodes of that show. They're out there and there's no announcement about and or product reveals. Uh, usually that either predates the show or is in the first week that the show drops. So I, I don't know. I listen, I've said this before. I, I understand that Lucasfilm and Hasbro have marketing plans that they have to stick to, uh, you know, things that they develop and come up with. As a consumer and part of what is, you know, maybe their target audience for the collector lines, I don't understand these marketing plans and approaches that they take. Uh, they're very frustrating. Uh, the lack of transparency, uh, it, and it just, it's always just leaving nothing but confusion and angst with everyone as opposed to, you know, nobody's really feeling great <laughs> about it. Uh, well, it seems. Yeah. And so. I think that, you know, the, the product lines are part of marketing, so I don't know why they're really skimping on them. I previously said that it seems like they treat the reveals as the product and the product is all secondary. Uh, so, which is why it's even more alarming, not alarming, but it's a little more befuddling to me to not even see them have 
a reveal strategy uh, clearly set in place yeah. for the show. I, I don't know. Sorry. It's strange. No, I mean, it's a difference from the other shows, of course. Um, maybe that's what they're going for. Maybe because the show's a little more mature in its themes, they don't want as much. But there already there is a Lego set out there already. You know, there's Black Series figures out there already. There's, we, you know, a Disney Parks figure, so they're not avoiding, you know, the Disney image entirely. Um, it's it's confusing and it's strange. But, and I, you know, I get if they if they want to avoid serious spoilers, I don't know why they don't say, okay, hold back on character X, Y, and Z. Don't make those figures for a while. But here's, here's you know, 10 characters you can make. Here's five you can't, whatever. Or uh, if they don't want to have a full line, you know, three months ahead of the show or movie like they did for um, so many of the Disney era movies and the, the prequel era movies, also known as the prequels. But um, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just it's a strange difference. Maybe they like to spread out the reveals over the course of the show, but because we haven't heard anything about that like they had for all the other shows. And it's, it's been such it's coming off such a dry spell of reveals and news. Um, yeah. Again, we know that I'm trying to, to keep the not wait. Don't be patient because we don't know if anything is coming officially. That's the lack of, of uh, communication is frustrating. But we know there is PulseCon coming up. There is a target reset coming. So hopefully there will be stuff with that. That's, you know, rebellions are built on hope, et cetera, et cetera. But yeah, I think maybe I just was feeling a little spoiled by having three Obi-Wan Kenobi figures right after the show was finished yeah. airing uh, and knowing that they were coming, you know, within the day of seeing the show for the first time. So that was I'm trying to look up because when is the uh, next wave supposed to come for? Uh... So the Morak Din Djarin wave is just hitting right now. Uh, so, yeah, the uh, the Cal Kestis wave, which still has a few un- for unrevealed January figures or February. Is when it says it was listed for November, and now it's yeah. listed for January. So again, who knows? These things always change. Sometimes they're early, sometimes they're late. But uh, since they showed those card backs at uh, Comic Con, we know that we assume that Cassian and Vel are going to be in that wave as well. So we might see stuff by a little bit after the end of the series, maybe while the series is still airing, as they did with Obi Wan. That would be a real treat. So we'll we'll see. Again, it's not nearly enough, but yeah, uh, two figures at bare minimum. I'm not saying be happy with it, but yeah, I don't know. It, I guess it's tough. Just waiting for more, waiting for more information out of these out of these cats. Yeah, yeah. That's I think that's really what it is: is the frustration of just how close to the chest they play everything when they don't really need to. Again, a main character in their main outfit from episode one till the end, or you know, from the first episodes, and that you see on the poster. That's not a spoiler, dog. So yeah. you, you've said that before. It's like, yeah, what's the mystery of giving us a figure of someone that we have a lot of promotional material for? So yeah, I don't and I, I think I assume the time to strike is when the iron is hot, as the saying goes. But uh, yeah. if somebody gets really excited about Andor, maybe it's their favorite series. Maybe it's, you know, rekindles their memories of going to see Rogue One and buying all the figures for that show from six years ago. Uh you know, some of us are nostalgic for things from decades ago. You might be nostalgic for things from six years ago, too. But, uh, you know, to watch it on Disney Plus and then immediately go on Hasbro Pulse and say, just scroll your Instagram and say, oh, my God, there's a Cassian figure to buy right now. I'll, I'll check it out. But nothing like that. So it's a little frustrating. Nope. Yeah. That, anyway. Um, whatever. We could talk about that. For, I could just I could just piss and moan about it for yes. <laughs> the rest of the day. But I oh, won't. I want this moaning to be obsolete by the end of PulseCon. But I do, uh, too. Well, I guess we'll find out. Uh, yeah. Um, also, aren't we coming up on the halfway point in between March Madnesses? Uh, yes. So after uh, we do all the vehicle stuff, we will be uh, running down. I was also waiting for PulseCon to see what we get out of that. Smart. To do another update on how many uh, figures have been made from the two March Madness uh, brackets and or top 100s not from Andor hopefully there's some Andor stuff but uh, yeah so stay tuned for that and as we close out the year there'll be plenty more balance of scales coverage finish the 96 coverage as we head back into a, another round of March Madness uh, early 2023 I was gonna say that's... I'll be around to March Ooh. is my guess but, yeah I, I hope but we'll need the top we'll need your top figure lists uh, 
before that. So we'll get into that. We'll get into that. Yeah. I, I'm going to kick that can down the road a little bit longer. Listen, time is not on our side, as we've mentioned, yes. but time is on your side, the listener. Start thinking about your top 25 lists now. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, because it's not as easy as it seems. Uh, but yeah. Yeah. Um, thank you again for, you know, the 10,000, 10,000 followers on Instagram. That is awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh, again, super stoked to be a part of this team and part of this movement, this community to, you know, keep 375 alive uh, or Mr. CV shirt three, 375 yes. for life. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's me. Oh, yeah. uh, even though I do yeah. have black series stuff, don't, I don't, I'm not defined by that. Don't let me be defined by the six inch figures that I have. So, yes. Um, but yeah. Uh, hey, don't forget out there to rate and review the podcast. If you enjoyed it at all, if you like us or if you like SWTVC or if you can just pretend to like us for a little bit, that would be great. Uh, you can find a link to do so in our Instagram bio on uh, at SWTVC. There's a little uh, link tree there. There's a link to just easily rate and review. Um, it's, it helps us out whenever we get a new review or a new rating kind of boosts our profile, uh, in terms of podcasts, helps us get a little more visibility, a little bit more, you know, uh, a little bit more listeners out there, uh, engaged. So, uh, it helps us. It's a very selfish ask. So, uh, if you get around to it, that'd be appreciated. I think that's going to do it for this episode, John. Do you agree? I think that's it. All right. Well, Hey, as always keep three, seven, five alive. Back TVC, finish the 96, balance the scales Hasbro, and may the force be with you.